so imagine this a plane in distress desperately needing to land right the pilot calls mayday 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 but there's no immediate response how could this happen in today's advanced aviation world how can a plane needing an emergency landing go unnoticed at a modern airport equipped with cutting-edge technology and highly trained personnel Welcome back to Flight Realities, your go-to channel for uncovering the truths and debunking the myths in the world of aviation. I am Joseph, and today we are tackling a critical topic that has sparked numerous debates and misunderstandings. So the question remains, how can planes within certain airports be unaware of a particular plane that requires an emergency landing? You see, with modern technology and advanced pilot training, is this really possible? So let's dive deep into the issue and uncover the truth. So before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you never miss an update on our latest videos. Your support helps us bring you the most accurate and insightful aviation content and that is why we take feedback very meticulously on this channel and every feedback each and every one of our viewers have given us have been so helpful afar so we are trying everything we could to see what best fits into this channel as we move forward with our content production so thank you very much let's go back to the video so we're going to start with the backbone of airport operations the air traffic control of course this is something when when passengers go to the airport and they, they they board their planes they don't see the atc controller all they noticed is the airport the cabin crews the planes and if they're lucky even the pilots but they get to hear the pilot voice but they don't actually know that the pilot gets to discuss um, a lot of actions that have been taken from the ground down to taxing areas and even through the wrong way and then before the, the plane takes off and even up to the landing process of you know every flight so the ATC is responsible for the safe and efficient movement of aircraft both on the ground and in the air so modern ATC systems are incredibly advanced utilizing radar satellite and you know digital communication to monitor every aircraft's position and status However, this level of oversight makes it nearly impossible for an aircraft requiring emergency assistance to be overlooked. So let's just say we have an angel in the sky, of course, yeah. So, and that is why um, aviation today is being seen as one of the most safest means of transportation. Back in February, before COVID was named a pandemic, Raleigh took us up inside the tallest control tower in the country to see what it really takes to be an air traffic controller. This is Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, and these are its five runways. And here's the control tower. It takes a rotating staff of 58 traffic controllers to keep the airport running. So let's break this down further. Imagine an aircraft is experiencing a critical situation and needs to land immediately. So the first step the pilot takes is to declare an emergency, right? And often using the term Mayday three times, uh, as the case may be, I'm, I'm not a professional here, but we can all agree to this, right? So this declaration is broadcasted on the emergency frequency, which all ATC personnel are trained to monitor continuously. And at this point, the entire airspace coordination shifts to prioritize this aircraft safe landing. Yeah. 
So, but our attention has been brought to a lot of simulated videos online, especially YouTube and other social media platform on how people who get to simulate these events on, you know, Microsoft simulators and other similar applications get, you know, post some kind of unrealistic events that probably don't go well with the aviation industry per se, you know, and the long lasting impact on all this type of information could start bringing in, you know, insinuations that might cause, you know, you know the rest. So to illustrate, let, let's look at these related video clips showing an emergency landing scenario. South of 1458, you can expect an extended downwind. We have another fellow uh, company airplane coming in that has an emergency that's pretty serious, so we're going to dump him in front of you. No problem. Uh, we're running early. We'll do what you got to do. 1458. Join Erie there. Maintain 170 knots, please. I'm going to slow you down. Okay, Erie, 170 on the speed, south of 1458. Okay, we're southwest 1380. You'll be landing 27 left. 27 left today. And uh, you just let me know when you need to turn base. Uh, I, right now, I only have one person in front of you, which is a Southwest. But I'm sure he'll pull off if you need to go right in. Southwest 1380. I understand your emergency. Let me know when you want to go in. Yeah, we have a part of the aircraft missing, so we're going to need to slow down a bit. Southwest 1380. Speed is your discretion. Maintain uh, at any altitude above 3,000 feet. And you let me know when you want to turn base. All right. Down to 3,000. 210 on the speed. Southwest 1380, turn, uh, just start turning southbound there. There's a Southwest 737 on a four mile final. We'll be turning southbound. Start looking for the airport. It's off to your right and slightly behind you there. And uh, altitude is your discretion. Use caution for the uh, downtown area. Maintain, uh, advise you to maintain at about 2,200 for uh, the MVA. Okay, could you have the uh, medical meet us there on the runway as well? We've got uh, injured passengers. Injured passengers, okay. And are you, is your airplane physically on fire? No, it's not on fire, but part of it's missing. Do you notice how the ATC immediately acknowledged the emergency call and starts clearing the airspace? Now, other aircraft in the vicinity are either instructed to hold their positions or routed to avoid any potential conflicts. Now, this level of coordination is a testament to the rigorous training and protocols in place. Of course, this is our expectations. And we expect that this, these actions are well coordinated in, in, in such a sense that no conflict should happen in or within the runway or even within the airport itself or the airspace. Pilot flying over Texas sounding fine one moment, suddenly an air traffic controller could detect slurring in his speech the next. The pilot had no idea himself, and this was not alcohol. ABC's Paula Ferris reports tonight this was something else. Nearly 5,000 flights go through her airspace each day. But it was the twin propeller plane on its way from Dallas to Michigan that alarmed air traffic controller Luella Hollingsworth. Advisor 1 Papa Mike, I think you need to start a descent. Can you do that for me? Just going to maintain flight level 240. All she heard on the other end heavy breathing. That's the sound of an unresponsive pilot soaring at 27,000 feet in one of the country's busiest airways. There's just nobody saying words. And then after 20 or 30 miles, I kept trying to call him. The pilot tries to respond. I can hear you. Hear you. Listen to him again, slurring his words. Another pilot hears the exchange. I don't know if you can hear that guy, but he does not sound good. I didn't know if he'd ever answer me again. She realizes he could be suffering from hypoxia or lack of oxygen. It's a dangerous condition. At high altitudes, pilots and passengers can lose consciousness in a matter of minutes. It's what happened on board famed golfer Payne Stewart's jet in 1999, leading to tragedy. Luella repeatedly urges the pilot to descend. Hey, one pop of mic, if you got the oxygen, try that. Um, just going to maintain flight of 180. Finally, a clear response. Advisor, one pop of mic. Advisor, one pop of mic, you're sounding a little better. She guides him down to safety, 13,000 feet in 15 minutes. Thanks for the help. Way to go to that air traffic mm -hmm. controller. You were saying he was at 27,000 feet, but you pointed out to me at 35,000 feet, it gets very dangerous. Very dangerous. You may only have five to 10 seconds before you completely black out, before you grab that oxygen mask. That's why it's so important. And for that air traffic controller, big metal? Big metal shoe on the metal of safety. Well deserved, mm -hmm. Paula, thanks to you. 
But let's go down through history. Historically, there have been incidents where planes in distress have faced challenge during emergency landings. However, these are often due to a combination of factors such as outdated technology, miscommunication, or extremely rare circumstances. So for instance, the tragic Tenerife airport disaster in 1977 where miscommunications and fog led to a collision is a stark reminder of the importance of effective communication. Another good example is the airplane crash of the Sosoliso airline in Potakot, Nigeria in 2005. But aviation has come a long way since then. But today, today's airports are equipped with cutting edge technology designed to prevent such occurrences. Real-time data sharing, advanced radar systems and automated alerts ensure that every aircraft's status is continuously monitored. And in addition, pilots are trained extensively on emergency procedures, ensuring they can communicate effectively and follow ATC instructions precisely. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some videos online where pilots, you know, disregard ATC instructions, of course. Uh, maybe I'll be discussing that in some other video. So, let's look at some facts. According to the FAA and other aviation authorities, the number of successful emergency landings has significantly increased over the past decades. You will agree with me. And thanks to improved technology and training, statistics show that over 95% of emergency landings are handled without incidents. This is a direct result of the stringent safety measures in place. So, why this simulated event misinforming the public. So I will still say, pilot training is another critical component. Modern simulators provide realistic emergency scenarios, allowing pilots to practice and perfect their response strategies. And this training is crucial for maintaining composure, and making quick, informed decisions during actual emergencies within the shortest period of time. So, if you missed our last video on the Nepal plane crash, unveiling the dark reality of aviation safety. Be sure to check out uh, the link below and then watch the video if you haven't yet watched the video. It sheds light on how crucial safety measures are in the aviation industry. So with all this in mind, we would like to hear from you, our viewers. Have you ever experienced or witnessed an emergency landing? And if you are, what are your thoughts on the capabilities of modern ATC systems and pilot training? So uh, I would need your reflections on that, of course. So you can as well leave your comment below and let's start a conversation. Maybe together we can debunk the myths and spread awareness about the realities of aviation safety rather than what we see online, you know, spreading across every space within the social media. So from my end, it will be thank you for joining us on this journey to uncover the truth about emergency landings. Remember, aviation is one of the safest modes of transportation. Thanks to the relentless efforts of ATC professionals and pilots worldwide. So don't forget to subscribe to Re Flight Realities for more insightful content. Until next time, fly safe and stay informed. Goodbye.